do this. All right. Hi, everybody. My name is Jason Aramburu, and I am the co-founder and CEO of Soil IQ. I'm joined on stage by my co-founder and hardware expert, Luke Eisman. So I'm a soil scientist, and I'm here because I'm really passionate about food, delicious, organic, healthy food. But the reality is that in this country, most of our food is produced in a place like this, a factory farm. And these farms are great for growing corn or soybeans, but they're bad for the environment and increasingly bad for our health. So we've put together a team of people, of software engineers, hardware engineers, scientists, and we've partnered with one of the top industrial design and strategy firms in the world, Fuse Project and Yves Behar, to develop a revolutionary product that will change how we all grow food. I'm going to show you how it works. This is our Soil IQ probe. Can we switch to the camera, please? Soil IQ probe is a precision agriculture sensor for small farmers and gardeners. So imagine this house plant is your backyard garden or your lawn. 100 million homes in the US have a lawn or garden. You stick soil IQ in the ground, and immediately, the device is transmitting data. It's measuring soil pH, soil moisture, temperature, humidity, and plant available light. It streams all this data wirelessly to the cloud. The device is powered by an internal solar panel, so it runs indefinitely in your garden. Our platform takes all this information, stores it in the cloud, and processes it. So could we please switch to the Elmo? To the iPad mini, please. Could we switch to the projector, please? Thank you. So you can see the data streaming live right now from this plant here. And growers can view this data historically. They can view it live. These are all really important parameters for growing crops. So our app takes all this information and actually processes it through an algorithm. So if you click on the Crops tab, you can add a crop based on your local conditions. So our device collects the data and says what seeds you should select, what type of crop is best suited for your local environment. So in this case, we'll add some arugula. Once you've planted your crops, Soil IQ is actually continuously monitoring your field. It's measuring the data, and it'll let you know if any of those parameters falls out of line. There's also a social aspect, because if you know any gardeners, you know they love to brag and share information. With Soil IQ, you can see who around you is growing what. You can exchange messages, trade information with them. You can even buy their crops and share pictures of your own crop. So we make it fun, kind of like Farmville in real life. So if we could switch back to the laptop, please. You know, one of the big reasons that people fail at gardening, even just maintaining a house plant, is they forget to water. With Soil IQ, if your plant needs watering, needs fertilizer, needs anything, you'll get a tweet or an SMS telling you to attend to your plants. And if you ignore it, the tweets get a little more impassioned. So it takes talking to your plants to a whole new level. In our product roadmap, we're building out a suite of automation systems and additional products in the home, lawn, and garden vertical and the small to medium-sized agriculture vertical that'll take this data and allow you to act on it, automate watering, fertilization, et cetera. So this is great for the home market and for the agriculture market, but Luke and I are very passionate about social impact. We worked for three years in Kenya with small farmers, helping them to use organic fertilizer funded by the Gates Foundation. Thanks to our partner, Orange Telecom France, we're able to bring soil IQ to farmers in need in Kenya who can benefit from this technology and improve their crop yield. So we're going after really big, different markets that haven't seen much technological innovation. You know, lawn and garden, it's a $20 billion market and, you know, not much technology. So 
we've realized that design is critical. This is the prototype here in our beta, but we're very excited to show the first drawings of our probe. So these designs are produced by Eve Behar and Fuse Project, and we believe it's a functional, iconic design. Gardeners will be proud to have soil like you in their garden. They'll be growing food organically, sustainably, and they'll be changing the world. So I invite you to visit our website, sign up for our beta. We've had 1,000 people sign up just in the past 24 hours. Visit us on AngelList, and together, we can help change the world's food system for the better. Thank you. All right. Soil IQ. Judges? What, what exactly can you test with the device? Uh, obviously, water, you talk about that, mm -hmm. but pH? Yep. And, and what else? You can test moisture, and it's testing moisture by the uh, conductivity of the soil. So that also gives you a rough estimate of the fertility of the soil, the amount of ions present. But we're directly measuring pH, which uh, I'm a soil scientist. To this point, it's been very challenging to directly measure pH in the field. You actually, you know, in, in agronomy and agriculture, you have to take a pH uh, soil sample back to the lab, extract liquid from it, and then test the pH. So that's very unique, and that's part of the core of our IP. Uh, we're also measuring temperature, humidity, and light, specifically light in the red and blue spectrum, because that's what plants absorb and use. In our road. Hello. Here. Mike, in our roadmap, we're going to take all the other sensors we have in our smartphones and all our other devices and adapt them, either in, still in smartphones or variants inside our devices, to help improve people's ability to sustainably grow food with less work. One of the more exciting roadmap, not now, but roadmap things, will be automating disease detection, where we can use some image recognition and the newly ubiquitous cameras we all have to say, hey, that's, that's patient zero for a disease outbreak instead of you know, your entire garden dying or like regularly happens in the developing world, 20% of their corn harvest countrywide disappearing overnight, we can prevent that by catching it at the start. How much is the monitor gonna cost? That so the, uh, the bomb on the device, the internals, 10 to $15, and we'll price it at retail under $100. Got it. How is it communicating? Uh, it's communicating wirelessly, and um, it's actually, so this device is communicating over Wi-Fi, and it's doing it actually in a unique way, because um, you know, a lot of people ask the question, there's not, what if there's not Wi-Fi on your farm, or what if it doesn't uh, reach all across your garden? We can actually mesh the probes together and each one has a quarter mile range. So in an agricultural setting, that means uh, you could have a minimum of one probe per acre and blanket your field with a wireless signal. Have you studied the efficacy of if you had these devices in your farm or in your garden, the difference in output, like the quality of the plants, quality of food? Yep. So uh, we're seeing an uh, increase in yield per acre, 10 to 20%, which is consistent with what's called precision agriculture big industry, you know, 1,000, 2,000 acre farms have a similar suite of sensors, but on a massive scale, and, and those are the improvements in yield that they see. And to us, it's, it's exciting that this can impact agriculture and small gardening as it occurs now. What's really, truly disruptive, world-changing, and you know, what we'll spend the rest of our lives working on is making it super easy, super natural for everyone to grow more food than they need with less work in a more sustainable manner. I think with the trend towards local and organic, though, there's a really big idea here. I guess one question is, though, um, and I just don't know, is how much of growing plants is around the soil? My guess is it's a lot of it, but I also think that this, like, the level of sun, maybe you're measuring that, maybe you're not, pollination in the case of fruit. Mm -hmm. And also the question is, how are you thinking about getting feedback into the system? Because I think the quality of the plants that you produce is something that you're going to want to have feedback on in terms of is this area a sunny area? Is this you know Absolutely. a season that's been sunny? You know, are, are the right things happening environmentally beyond the soil? Soil is critical, obviously, and that's probably the most important factor. But you're absolutely right. Sunlight is critical, and our eyes are actually fairly poor at detecting differences in light intensity. Um, to grow plants successfully, you want about 1,500 lux, and to the naked eye, that doesn't look that different from 200. That's you know probably what we're seeing here. But it can make a big difference for your plants. 
So uh, that's why we included that sensor in the device. And as far as feedback, users can actually rate their crops, post pictures, and other users can rate their crops. So that creates a feedback loop. You know, each time, when, when you saw in the demo we added a crop, that's actually loading a profile of all these different parameters, also things like market price, what users around you are growing, and that's how we determine what crops to recommend. And we're not kidding about the Farmville in real life. We can use seeds as this magical Ponzi scheme currency where you magically produce more than you started with when you grow food. So we've toyed with maybe using those as points in a game whereby taking photos of your crops, sharing them with your friends, all of these we can incentivize by you know, mailing you some heirloom seeds or giving points to your neighbor to send you seeds. So we'll be, if we're half as fun as Farmville, that's a world changing impact and not that high of a bar to set. <laughs> I'm curious, which is really your initial target market? Because I think of the home enthusiast, you know, garden application being very distinct from even the small farmers. Right? Sophisticated, understands what pH is, the average gardener has no clue. You know, so, so how do you think about those two markets? And which you, which, well, what we've chosen to on? go consumer first as our strategy because um, we be, we, we've realized that the consumers are the early adopters of this kind of tech. The barrier is lower for them with smaller uh, grows. You know, the average garden in the States is about 600 square feet, 100 million homes with a lawn or garden. But what's missing for small to medium sized ag is the data. It would be difficult to go to a farmer and say in a data driven way how to grow, say, alpine strawberries, because so much of that information is still in farmers' heads for specialty crops. So our strategy is to go consumer, build the profiles of crops that people want to consume and are consuming the ideal growing conditions for crops in microclimates around the world, and then go after small to medium sized ag. So we'll be releasing a pro version of the device with a more advanced suite of sensors that can measure individual levels of nutrients, the kind of data that's critical for small to medium sized growers. It seems to me a fatal flaw is using Wi-Fi instead of cell networks. I, I, I think about my house, I'd love this, but the, there's, there's no way to get Wi-Fi out to where my garden is. And maybe most people it's fine because it's just in their backyard, but rural areas and, and then third world countries, it seems like you're far better off. With yeah, so, so we're not dependent on Wi-Fi. We've prototyped with 3G as well. It's more, and you know, RIP abstracts away the connection technology because you know, there's a lot of stuff out there. Different things in different situations will make more sense. So, yeah, totally agreed that Absolutely. we're not relying on Wi-Fi. And in rural areas, you know, if you're on a big farm in Iowa, say, there won't necessarily be a cell tower covering the entire field. So that's why, again, we, we've remained flexible. But our partner, Orange, uh, has very generously donated uh, data service, actually, on their mobile network to farmers in Kenya. Because, as you said, you know, while 61% of US houses have Wi-Fi, it's very low in Kenya. What's really exciting there is that we're all, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say we don't have any farmers in this room who are actually any good at it. We're all bad at farming, but ha would you know like to grow some more of our sustainable local food. Kenyans are typically awesome at farming. So by, having, by addressing that market, we're gaining the benefit of that data, which is what's really exciting. We have this globally distributed network of an internet of farms, then we start to be able to do things like multivariate testing to figure out how to actually grow more sustainable, higher yields on food crops instead of just like, you know, the optimal font size on a web page to get somebody to click to buy. That's important and all, but, you know, this real world stuff is really exciting too. Any other judges of the question? How many of you guys grow your vegetables, fruits, anything like that? A couple at the end. And the rest of you, why don't you? Is it because you don't think you know enough about the soil you're growing in or <laughs> when to water or anything? Or do you think you would if you had one of these? No, but it's cool enough that I'd want to have one anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wonder if you could talk a little bit. Maybe this is irrelevant because you're going after only these smaller um, farmers. But my understanding is there's a lot of activity now in precision agri agriculture, like including like you know, ground robots and a bunch of other, can you talk a little bit about how you compare your solution to those? So, yeah, if you're a thousand acre farm in Iowa, you may already have a precision ag system. And the challenge there is the equipment's really expensive. You know, what's common is uh, there's a device that looks like a rototiller, you know, these giant uh, big circular disks that 
gets pulled by a tractor across a field and it's continuously measuring the conductivity of the soil and mapping it with GPS, but that's a $20,000 piece of equipment. So that technology serves the top end of the market, the grain producers, but it's not applicable for specialty crops, which, you know, a major product in California, for instance, and also about half the agricultural market, things like strawberries, lettuce, uh, vegetables. And as far as drones, you know, we're very familiar with things like uh, Blue River, 3D Robotics, you know, the future of farming is lightweight automated systems. And we, as I said, we've included automation in our portfolio, our IP portfolio, and you know, we view our ability to deliver data services, to layer data services on top of this network as a, a, one of our advantages as we build this out. So you know, if you have a drone flying over your field, again, there's no cell tower. You need a network to control it. It's also interesting as the organic standard becomes weakened and more controversial, we could offer a live data feed on the farm that says, you know, no, we don't have many small farms. Don't bother with the $30,000 USDA organic certification. If they could show people the live data from what happened to the food that they're about to eat, then you don't, you don't worry about what your farmer is doing because you know in real time exactly what's happening. What does a tweet look like when my plants are dead? <laughs> Skull and crossbones. Do you, have like, do you have like a wall of shame of the people who have the most plants that have died on their watch? We'll definitely well, have that. You, you got the have, social yeah. angle here. You could have like a group of friends. You say like, who is the worst grower of <laughs> things? I don't well, know. the gamification aspect is critical because farmers and gardeners, gardeners particularly, are competitive. They want to outshine their friends and outshine their neighbors. So it is critical and it's very important. I, I hope you implement the wall of shame. Uh, <laughs> so we're unfortunately out of time. That was Soil IQ. Thank you guys very much. Thank you.